the day, uh, at the end of the day, the fishing out there in the Abbott Coast, we were only burning like 80 gallons a day. And a lot of customers' boats still burn that just going out the end. Yeah. So uh, being able to being able to burn the fuel and to travel and fish without having to worry about your fuel consumption is just, is just phenomenal. So the overall fuel consumption is fantastic. Then as the rougher the weather gets, the more you like to be in the boat that like that. I mean the boat's made to balance. So when you make a boat to balance, unlike you know putting a lot of horsepower and a lot of tab into your boat, when that boat falls into the waves as you're fishing, you know, it's falling to balance. It's not hitting one side, you know, it's not dunking the front end of the boats, you know, really kind of sitting in there nice. And thank God it does because the 28 foot tower that I fish from is <laughs> a hell of a lot different than being, you know. Down the, uh, in the console, so the boat turned out fantastic. And when I was talking to you guys last, that was just, a, you know, that was just a project that I had in my head that I hope that you know come to fruition. So please check that out online. And then you guys want to do some run fishing? We're going to do four or five tournaments again in June and in the So uh, keep that in mind and maybe I'll just see what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the network's pretty cool. So um, if you have any other questions, you know, I'm here to answer them for you. You use mostly uh, live bait and all that? Well, when I'm tarpon fishing, you know, it goes in cycles. The, um, all through the summer, we live bait and all the fish, the two baits we go to. Um, you know, we have about three or four more weeks where we fish on the mullet, and then we'll turn over the shrimp really quickly. And once this water cools down, the tarpon don't really want to spend a lot of energy eating, so that's when we start fishing. <coughs> then once you go from shrimp, it starts to rain a little bit in you know, March and April, the water starts to warm up, then you know, crabs go too big. You know, and then once it starts raining and fills in and the temperatures all warm up, it gets real tough again. But that's when you want to find your mall. You know, but uh, often that time of year finding the mall are harder to find the snow and the But uh, yeah, that's 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 pretty much the go to date from uh, probably June to about now. Uh, you know, when the, when, when the tarpon start eating the shrimp, it's a lot more forgiving for people you know, just to go out and uh, monkey around and fish a little bit and you don't expect to catch a tarpon. When you're fishing with the mullet, you really got to be well practiced, you know, both in catching the mullet and, and fishing. You know, same with the, uh, the, the any, any type of bigger like they you know, the shrimp they eat on top of so, you know, it doesn't take are you the all types all the dark ones? Yeah. Any artificials? It's not that I wouldn't like to use artificials. It's just that uh, you know when I'm taking people, they're, they're usually they're paying. I'm trying to put the odds in favor of the best I can. So almost always I'm using some sort of live bait. But you can't get them all, or you can drop by and filter it, or you want to do that, or? Well, you can't, can't get the mullet, and you know, then I go with thin fish. You know, thin fish, crab, shrimp, you know, you know where the fish are, but you can't get the bait. I mean, the one good thing about the tarpon is still, if you fish for them, you know, long enough to make it through their little feeding pad, you know, they're going to eat, and when they eat, they eat fairly aggressively. We I mean, catch them on just about anything. You know, so if you're fishing in an area and you can't find a mullet, you know, take the freshwater canals up, you know, by this way in the middle river. Hell, tilapia will work a hell of a lot better for tarpon and snook up this way most of the time than a mullet will work anyway. You know, so if you're fishing in an area and you can't get mullet, really good front. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you just fish for them when they decide to eat them. I mean, they're going you know, to do it, it's gone. There's no, there's no right or wrong way to catch any of these fish. You know? there's, there's ways that you know a guy like myself would do it. Just, you know, we're playing a numbers game. It's kind of like baseball. We're doing everything we can possibly do to get somebody to fish. You know, but that doesn't make it the right way to do it. That's just the way you know we do it because we're dealing with people that don't have the expertise for casting, for instance. And you can't ask somebody to cast underneath that table ten times. That hasn't picked up the fishing rod. You know, so the way I'm going to fish for them, I'd be more than happy to you know, speak.
big that you but it's not necessarily what we call the right way. And I know kids that catch tarpon and snook on a monthly basis, nice fish with dead bait on the bottom. That's all they do is fish dead bait on the bottom. You know? The day we're fishing a live bait, you know, sitting on a seawall somewhere, just to say the dead bait would not work best. So I think that's important. You know, a lot of us get caught up, especially when it comes to like the kite fishing.